Oh, we were going to do uh, Caspian. Uh, we were going to look at Caspian Report. The unthinkable video. has happened. Actually, the State of the Union thing, but I was going to look at the Caspian Report new video. Um, the unthinkable has happened. Russia's invaded Ukraine. What will happen? Uh, what the global consequences of said invasion will look like? Um, what will the global consequences be at the top of the hour when there's a 60 second ad break? Uh, for those who no longer want to see those ads, well, the global consequence is going to be a uh, Twitch Prime subscription or a $5 subscription. Or if you're lucky, you could get gifted a sub too. That's another way. But uh, here's the woman ad break regardless. Hostilities have broken out between Ukraine and Russia, and the stakes are global. The Russian invasion is Europe's biggest war since the 1940s, and the first toppling since then of pee. a democratically elected government by a foreign invader. An assessment by US intelligence estimates that a full-blown conflict, prolonged over a lengthy period of time and covering all of Ukrainian territory, could lead to as many as 50,000 civilian casualties. Be back. Refugees, possibly in the millions, would move in multiple directions. Europe would start arming itself to the teeth, China would see an opening to take over Taiwan by force, and Iran would shift the nuclear talks in its favor. Likewise, prolonged conflict in Ukraine would affect global markets like energy prices, raw materials, commodities, etc. Russia and Ukraine account for a remarkable 29% of the worldwide supply of wheat. Prolonged conflict in this breadbasket would have ripple effects across the world. So, now that the Kremlin has let slip the dogs of war, let's quantify the military, economic and political consequences. Today's video is sponsored by Masterworks. Now we chose to work with Masterworks in this video because unlike most investment platforms, Masterworks has nothing to do with the stock market, real estate or cryptocurrency. Masterworks is all about fine art. P related to it. War is a racket. It begins when governments believe the price of hostility is affordable. Russia's supreme objective in Ukraine is to disconnect the country from the West, a goal that could take many forms, like regime change, federalization, partitioning, or even a negotiated surrender. Should Russia win and gain control over Ukraine, and the jury is still out on that, but should it win and stabilize the country on a large scale, the geopolitical calculus would change completely. It wouldn't be like it was before. Europe would have to rethink its security arrangements. New doctrines would be crafted that restrict collective security to the core members of the EU and NATO. Anyone caught outside the club would be on their own. Finland and Sweden would have authentic reasons to join NATO, and public opinions may yet steer them into the arms of NATO. But aside these two nations, both the EU and NATO would likely halt their expansion programs for new members. Europe would look to bolster the defense of its members, but not beyond. Meanwhile, Russian sway over Ukraine and by extension Belarus would be seen by the neighborhood as a security hazard. A vast front line of insecurity, call it the new Iron Curtain, would extend from Estonia to Poland to Romania to Turkey. This image by flight radar shows that frontier in the making. This is what it looks like when the global order undergoes change. Of course, Europe would reject the new Russian-backed government in Kiev, but it would be a situation reminiscing Belarus. The Europeans wouldn't know what to do about a pro-Russian government in Ukraine. Yet ironically, by attacking Ukraine, Russia has gifted NATO a new means of existence. The United States will play an indispensable role in that transition, so much so that Washington may yet pivot to Europe again. Strengthening NATO would be the means to provide security reassurances to Europe and deter Russia from encroachment. 
NATO would return to its roots. No more democracy building or nation building, but a straightforward military alliance that it was meant to be. However, while Washington and Moscow come to see each other as bitter enemies, hostilities can only be taken to a certain threshold. As two formidable nuclear powers, the Kremlin and the White House would have to keep their outrage in check. So, rather than a kinetic exchange, a permanent economic war of attrition would be the most defining consequence. Sanctions would harm Russia, but the Kremlin could survive the immediate economic fallout. The Russian Central Bank has about 600... Wouldn't it be possible for the USA to deploy troops to defend Ukraine without the threat of a nuclear war? It's not like we're threatening to take over Russian territory. What? Okay. If Russia had supreme military power, do you think their military would attack America without America saying we're going to nuke you? Like, you think you, you, people think that there's like a like PVP unlocked zone, you know what I mean? Like, why don't why don't the Russian military and American military go to a PVP only zone and and duke it out? You know, it's fair. It's fair to do it that way. Kind of f***ed up that they won't do it that way. You know, hundred forty three billion dollars in reserves, enough to withstand the sanctions thrown at Russia. That even their PVP only zone was uh, Syria, and even in that circumstance, there were some really heated moments. But it it mostly turned into a proxy war again of factions being trained by the american government fighting in certain instances against the russian forces but never directly that said about 40 percent of the reserves are held in euros and five percent in british pound these quantities can still be targeted by sanctions that's almost half the russian reserves so sanctions on the central bank would diminish russia's strength to stave off economic collapse in the long run, however, China could serve as an economic substitute for the West. Russia's trade with the European Union accounted for nearly $220 billion in 2021, while bilateral trade with China accounted for $146 billion. But even though the European market is roughly 1.5 times the size of Russian Chinese trade, the latter has grown substantially in recent years. For comparison, while in 2003, trade with China made up $16 billion, by 2021, it had grown to $146 billion. If bilateral trade continues at a pace, China could replace the West as an economic substitute. But whether the Russian reserves have enough funding to bridge the gap depends on the severity of the sanctions. Now, Europe, at tremendous cost to itself, could decide to reduce energy imports from Russia, which would War in Ukraine has global consequences by the Caspian report, which is currently number number 14 on trending. Cut deep into the Russian skin. Energy revenues account for almost 40% of the Russian budget revenues. So this is income that wouldn't be readily replaceable. Increasing natural gas ex Gnome Chomsky is pretty funny. Do we know this guy's political and geographic bias? Seems smart, but I don't know. He's fashy or something. Just that immediate self-report. Like, this guy seems to have an accent, so I'm not going to be able to make up my mind about the information that he's presenting and need to know what his, like, and, and immediately assume that he's, like, probably a fascist or something. He's Azerbaijani, okay? He's Aziti. Uh, so, yeah. Put that information what you will, okay? Are you, are you happy? Exports to China is an option, but that would require constructing and expanding infrastructure from the Siberian deposits to the Chinese heartland. Building such a vast network of pipelines would cost tens of billions of dollars. Moreover, it wouldn't be as profitable as the European market since the Chinese wouldn't be paying premium price as the Europeans do. Beyond trade and energy, the Americans and the Europeans could introduce the mother of all sanctions, cutting off Russia from the SWIFT payment system. Some banks have already been cut, but not all. There are some EU member states that want to keep loopholes in place while claiming credit for standing up to Russia. 
For context, SWIFT is a global transfer system used by banks and financial institutions to send and receive money transfer instructions. It's a system that's quick, accurate and secure. There are more than 11,000 SWIFT member institutions that make more than 35 million daily transactions. All of this, the entire SWIFT network is regulated by the power of the dollar. Using SWIFT for political means could undermine its reliability and motivate other nations to create alternatives. China has its own international payment system in place. Now Russia could integrate into that alternative, but it wouldn't be the same. SWIFT sanctions without loopholes would suffocate businesses in Russia. In response to such drastic measures, Russia could raise its hybrid war in Europe. Cyber attacks and political lobbying could become the norm. Much of this is already happening, but a sustained conflict in Ukraine would ante up the stakes. Moscow would indirectly and directly encourage pro-Russian candidates or political movements. By doing so, by playing into the self-interest of nations, Russia would try to get one or more European states to back away from the economic war of attrition and thereby undermine consensus in Europe. For instance, a prolonged war in Ukraine could result in millions of refugees moving in multiple directions. Russia could exploit that crisis by worsening the debate on refugee policy and by encouraging populist movements across the continent. This is just one of the many narratives we could see play out over the years. Never happened before, that'd be crazy. Do you remember how during the- To be fair, like uh, the difference there, white supremacy does play a role in that conversation where I don't think that like populist countries are gonna, I mean, I guess they've done it to Polish people the in the UK. So I guess they would do it, they're Slavs still, so. You can see the different kind of racism in like these country, these kind of countries. I mean, Brexit had uh, a lot of influence, like a lot of the the influence, uh, a lot of the decisions influencing Brexit and people's advocacy for Brexit was the Polish taking their jobs. UK loves the Polish. That's bullshit. Yeah, I, I totally made that fact up. It's not like backed by any data or anything. Yeah, totally. Previous session, he was moving, walking out of uh, the chamber trying to call someone not knowing what was going on how we can trust you how we can trust your assurance you have no idea what is on the mind of your president <laughs> your words have less value that, than a hole in the new york pretzel elsewhere in the world a prolonged conflict in ukraine would have geopolitical ripple effects Seeing Russia defy the West could encourage China in its aims to subjugate Taiwan. China and Taiwan have been bracing for hostilities for decades, but recently things have entered a more dangerous phase. The one country, two systems principle has failed. Beijing is out of diplomatic options, and US military officials believe China could invade Taiwan by 2027. America is already distracted at home with various domestic topics polarizing its political landscape, but an American pivot to Europe would further split Washington's resources. China would have a real opening to take over Taiwan, and it's unlikely that Beijing would miss up on that opportunity. Meanwhile, in the Korean Peninsula, Pyongyang's hand would strengthen at the negotiations. Should Bro, what the are they gonna do anytime people add korea into the conversation it's just like what are they gonna they got nothing bro they're like they're literally a vassal state for china it's not even a vassal state. it's like a buffer you're describing you're you're describing a, a a not even a vassal state but just simply a buffer state for for china Russia shift from its current handbrake invasion to a full dude you're being so ignorant right now they're gonna throw such a Huge parade, dude, you have no idea. Invasion, that is to say, should it start applying the full brunt of its force, the ensuing artillery barrage would be unlike anything seen in recent memory. I don't know, I disagree with you on the North Korea part. Yeah, because you watch too much American news. It would paint a vivid picture of what a similar North Korean barrage on South Korea would look like. That notion, as morbid as it sounds, 
would shift the narrative, possibly even... Like, North Korea has artillery positioned directly on Seoul, right? And uh, in an immediate barrage of artillery, they could reach, I think the human casualty numbers would reach like 150,000, which is devastating. It's horrible. But part of the reason why it won't happen is because they would get, they would get glass so quick. South Korea has uh, weapons as well, but like they would literally get glassed before they could hit a button. The entire country, they would wipe out everyone in North Korea without ever even considering it, without ever even like thinking about the consequences of it. This is the same thing about Russia invading Ukraine. Russia has the military power to do a lot of damage to, to Ukraine, a much smaller country with a much, much smaller uh, military. North Korea, on the other hand, is a nation that's been starved by sanctions for, since its inception. Undermining South Korean and Japanese interests. The thing is, sometimes the idea of war can be as like it's like comparing i don't know any number of different conquests that america has engaged in to russia which is what a lot of people are doing right now and that's why they're failing in their analysis whenever they say like well we did this in kuwait why can't we do this in russia it's like bitch russia is a nuclear superpower dude what are you talking about 150 million people like 11 time zones six thousand nukes brother you can't do you can't treat russia like a like a client state that has gone awry i just don't understand how people fail to recognize that like this shit ain't like the previous wars that america has engaged in north korea on the other hand is not even it's like iraq okay as harmful as war itself and a lengthy war in ukraine would reverberate hostilities in all disputed territories at the same time in iran the nuclear talks could collapse under its own weight. Russian diplomats play a surprisingly constructive role in the negotiations with Iran, repeatedly encouraging their Iranian counterparts to partake in the talks. Should Russia have a change of heart, it could pursue the opposite and take on a disruptive attitude in the negotiations. Iran would be more confident and look to leverage its position which would at the very least stall the negotiations if not collapse it altogether. The outcome of this would be far-reaching, especially for Israel. Prolonged conflict in Ukraine would also affect global prices of commodities, energy, raw materials, food crops and so on. Oil is already spiking, but a lengthy conflict involving Russia would send prices upwards. Dutch-based analysts from the Rabobank believe that crude oil prices could jump from the current $90 a barrel to anywhere between $125 and $175 a barrel, depending on the severity- Iran fucked up. Rule number two of nation building. And possibly even three. The Hassanabi doctrine dictates rule number two. Gotta get nukes. And number three, if another foreign adversary accuses you of having nukes, you immediately have to drop everything and make nukes of the sanctions. The same massive surge would also be seen in natural gas prices, where Europe is especially vulnerable. About 35% of Europe's natural gas comes from Russia, so things could fall apart really fast. A oh, rule number one was uh, get nukes. Rule number two is don't give up the nukes. And rule number three is if a foreign adversary claims you have nukes, drop everything and make nukes immediately no effect could push across financial markets. Another important sector is raw materials. Russia is a major producer of copper, aluminium, nickel, platinum, palladium, etc. Some of these raw materials are used in chip making, so expect even more delays in the semiconductor industry. Meanwhile, a long war in the breadbasket of Europe would endanger the food security of nations across the globe. Wheat exports from Russia and Ukraine combined account for a staggering 29% of the global supply. At a time when food prices are already rising due to supply chain disruptions, a prolonged war in Ukraine would skyrocket prices. In some countries, food security would come under severe risk. All in all, the global ramifications of a sustained conflict in Ukraine are extensive. Sometimes, without much reflection, governments go blindly on their way 
creating unintended consequences that push nations ceaselessly through the years, ultimately achieving nothing of value and permitting no pause for perspective. I've been your host, Shirvan, from Caspian Report. We will be making more reports on the situation. If Iran were to even say, yet have nukes, surely they will get attacked. Yeah, unlike now, which Iran is doing fine and definitely not being attacked. Oh, remember when an Israeli hit squad literally murdered an Iranian nuclear uh, scientist when he was on vacation? I remember. That was so crazy. Like, the, the shit that we allow people to do is is insane like they literally just murdered him uh in front of his family i think if i'm not mistaken uh, uh on vacation Oof. the video was war in ukraine could have global consequences what is this jesus christ dude that's a classic um you can get a personal drone strike fit in your backpack yeah I thought the ghost of Kiev was bullshit from the start, but it's getting more and more believable by the day from the Ukrainian government official. Ukrainian hero pilot Ghost of Kiev returned to the base after he was shot down. He's got a new plan and continues sending enemy airplanes to the hell. He has shot down at least 21 Russian jets already. Bro. Okay, let's do this. Here's one thing you can always do. Okay, are you ready? You go to Google reverse image search. Okay. Um, wait, how the do I do it on the desktop? Upload a picture. Go to Google images, search by image. Okay, dropping the image in here. Okay, visually similar images three days ago, five days ago, four days ago. One of them leads to a fact check. Social media celebrating Ukrainian fighter pilot shooting. Um, this is a sequence from the video game Digital Combat Simulator World. This footage is from DCS, but nevertheless made out of respect for Ghost of Kiev, the person who uploaded the video, writes. The photo was posted almost three years ago by the Defense Ministry. The pilot in the picture is doing a test flight with a new helmet. So even if that is in fact a mysterious pilot, the photo is an old one. Of course the image is old. He's busy shooting down Russians. <laughs> no, that's a Russian website? DW? Doshevele? Is Russian propaganda? What do you think the D stands for, dude? <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the math doesn't even make sense that the Ghost of Kiev would even have enough weapons to shoot down all the supposed Russian aircraft. Yeah, I mean, there's... I don't know. I don't know enough about the intricacies of of aerial combat but having said that no i don't believe that uh i don't believe <laughs> uh i don't believe that that's the real regardless it's just good propaganda it helps uh ukrainians sure yeah why is russia so bad at info war seriously i support ukraine but i have seen so many fake news and i just stopped reading the news lol dude i've talked about this before so many times the issue is Russia does not have the global network that the United States has or the West has in dishing out propaganda at the same clip. You can't do that, okay? But what you can do is dono to help Ukrainians while I get owned on the field of Dark Souls. That's right. I'm matching up to 10K today. Elden Rings for Ukraine is back. What's the boss I'm fighting right now? Fighting Godric right now. We'll be matching 10k again today. We try and hit 100k nations to Ukraine. No, I'm not gonna make fun of Ghost of Kiev while I'm raising money for Ukraine chatter. I'm done for the night. One million percent. Good night, everybody. Have fun. I hope that was a wonderful experience for all of you. I will literally, I cannot, I can't, I can't take that and then continue. Sorry. I, I have too much self-respect. I have too much dignity. 
I'm not playing anymore for the night. Anyway. And, um... That's all I got for the for the time being, boys, girls, MBs. I hope you guys enjoyed all that. I am loving Elden Ring. I'm enjoying it a lot. Happy to be able to share it with you. And uh, that's it. I'll see you. I'll see you, blokes, tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow, then. Peace. See you later. See you tomorrow.